Hello friends and welcome to this crochet tutorial as we continue on with our potato monster characters in this series. This one is showing you the Octo Kitty. Octo Kitty is no so, has all the tentacles of an octopus and the head of a kitty cat. We have our uh, cluster stitch here for the indention of a nose, 30 millimeter safety eyes, and blanket yarn. A very easy and simple project. Um, no color changes. The only addition of color was for the little bow in between the ears at the top and um, the black accent set showing the nose and the mouth. So, hope you come and join me in the making of Octo Kitty. Let's get started. The materials and the tools that we will be using to make Octo Kitty here we have a pair of scissors, a stitch marker. Here I am using two needles. One is just a regular darning needle. This will be useful in the face. And the other one is a sculpturing needle, which is also known as a doll needle. Make sure it has a large enough eye, which the blanket yarn will fit through. I have a seven millimeter crochet hook, scrap black yarn for the face. Uh, I have here a tan color for the body. I used yellow, which you can use any color for the bow. And the highlight of all of this is our safety eyes. These are eyes that I have painted they are 30 millimeter. They have dots on them. I do have a tutorial on my YouTube channel on how you can paint and create your own eyes. If you would like, you can always contact me and I will be happy to sell you a finished pair or the materials you need, except for the paint, to create your own eyes. These do come with the safety back cups some of them come with discs, but when you use the cups, it helps pull that yarn out to give it more of a 3D look. So, with all of our materials ready, let's really get started. Now, before we begin, you notice that mine's in a ball. This is Ogo yarn from Yarnspirations. I had many of them and I wanted to keep the dye lot together. So, in fact, I think here's where I knotted it. Um, if you use a skeiny yarn, I always use a center pull, but I always encourage you to pull out an ample amount of yarn so that way your tension will remain the same. If you pull on it as you're crocheting, you can have a tendency not to have stitching that looks the same. Uh, it also depends on how you hold your yarn too. So we're going to begin with a slip knot. I've shown many ways on how to do this. The easiest for me is just to create a loop. Take note of which loop is on the top. You'll see this one is the tail. So I'm going to come up from behind and pull the working yarn through the center, which basically creates an overhand knot on the regular yarn on your working yarn. Pull it tight and then pull your working yarn close to the hook, not too tight, but tight enough. Then we're going to start with a chain of eight. Every time we go through our chain, that is considered one. So yarn over and just pull it right through that loop on the hook. That's one. Here's two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now before we go on, I'd like to point out there's two sides to this chain. You'll notice that this one has like a V look. If you flip it over to the back, 
you'll see these straight lines. Some call them humps, some call them bumps. I just call it the back of the chain, but we'll probably use humps or bumps. <laughs> okay, the first loop right here on our hook is not a completed one. So we always count the first one off the chain or off the hook, the first chain. So we're gonna skip that first one and go here to the second one. And right here is where you'll find that little hump. Go ahead and take your hook and go, you're gonna go down in the middle and come back up and you'll pick up that hump from right there in the center. We're gonna yarn over Notice how I twist the hook, bring it through. We now have two loops on our hook. So yarn over, pull through those two loops, and we've created our first single crochet. After creating our first single crochet, let's go ahead and place our stitch marker. This will identify the beginning of our row. In that same stitch where we just made our first one, we're going to add one more single crochet. All right. When you have two single crochets in one stitch, and in this case one chain, this is known as an increase. So as we go through our tutorial here, you'll probably hear of the word increase. But if you're a beginner, I will remind you to place two single crochets in that one stitch. Let me go ahead and stop my camera. I'm going to bring it up a little closer so you can see it a lot better because now we're going to start with the base of our Octo Kitty. So as we move on, we're going to place one single crochet in the next five humps in the back. We're going to leave this last one open. One, two, three, four, and five. All right, you'll notice that this is curling up a little bit. Pinch the end and pull it. It'll straighten right out. Now in our last chain of this row, we're going to be placing four single crochets. But let me show you how we're going to do this. We're going to place two in the hump then we're going to bring it around and on the V side, which is the front side of the chain, we're going to place two in that one. So let's place two in the back here. Okay, and take your tail, bring it back around. And here's our V, the front of the chain. Let's go ahead insert the hook and make sure this yarn goes on to the inside or your left side of the knot. That'll help hide the knot inside your work without it showing on the outside. So here's one and into that same stitch our second one. Okay, let's stretch it out just a little bit. We have one, two, three, four, five. We're going to place one single crochet in each one of those stitches. Okay, here we have five single crochets, and in our last stitch, we're going to do an increase. Remember, the increase is two 
single crochets in the same stitch. Okay, let's enlarge our loop just a little bit. Take our hook out. You see how it's curled a little? It's okay. Stretch it. Sometimes as you crochet, you'll find that you need to do that. It's a different form of blocking because blocking sometimes includes water or some sort of chemical that'll help it to retain its shape. But in amigurumi, we really don't need it, but we want to make it sure that it lays flat. And this is how we do it. On to row two. Now, if you have made some of my potato monsters before, you'll find that the beginning of all these bases are all the same, except for this one. We're going to do something a little different on the second row. So let's move, remove the stitch marker for just a second. And in this first stitch right here, we're going to place one single crochet and re replace that stitch marker into that first stitch and then add another stitch. So the first stitch is actually an increase. Our second stitch will be into the next stitch, which is going to be an increase. So we have our increase here. Let's go to our second stitch. and place an increase here. Five single crochets, so one per stitch. Sometimes the black yarn likes to follow me around. <laughs> okay. We're going to have two increases. Two single crochets here. Two single crochets here. Okay, this is increase number one. And here's increase number two. The next stitch will get one single crochet, increase, six single crochets, so one per stitch. All right, we have one stitch left, which is our increase, two single crochets. Now, to making sure that everything is right, I would like for you to count each stitch to make sure that you have 24 single crochets around. Sometimes you can count the chains, sometimes you can count the stitches. Sometimes it's easier to count the chains on the top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. One, two, three, and four. Okay? Make sure you have twenty-four because the feet take up three stitches. So we'll have a total of eight feet. Please pause your video and make sure that you have the 24 single crochet. So I wrote it down. 
call it an introduction to reading <laughs> crochet recipes or crochet patterns. What we're going to do is we're going to start off with a single crochet. We're going to chain 10. At the top of the chain 10, we're going to skip the first chain. Whoops, I keep hitting my camera. We're going to slip stitch into the second chain. We're going to do four single crochet increases, which will cause the chain to start to curl just a little bit. Then we'll do a half double crochet increase, which is two half double crochets in the same stitch, three double crochets, which will be the last three chains of the chain 10. The skipped one stitch will be part of the body here, and then we'll slip stitch into the next stitch. Then we will come all the way back up in here and single crochet into the next stitch. So you're going to notice that the single crochet and the slip stitch is actually two stitches together. So I'm going to bring this up after I show you how to do it so that you can read this as your video is on pause so that you can do this 10 times, I mean eight times total. Uh, when you get to the end, of course, I will be there to show you what to do next. Now, for this particular um, octopus legs, I wanted the right sides to show because it looks better. If I was to have the opposite side to show, the curling wouldn't do like I wanted it, like I want it to do. It would do something different. So we're going to do something that's not normal in amigurumi, and we're going to um, make it so that all the right side stitching shows up here in front. Okay, so go with me. I'm going to show you how to do it step by step so that way we can get it 100% correct. Okay, so here we are at the end of the second row. Now what I would like for you to do is to take it and turn your work so that your stitch marker right here is on your right side if you're right-handed. If you're left-handed, it'll be over here on your left side. Okay, so right here in this first stitch, the one that we just completed right here, we're not going to chain one. We're just going to turn it around. So right here in this first stitch, I would like for you to place a single crochet. Okay, if it feels a little tight with the loop on your hook, go ahead and extend it just a little bit so that way you can insert it into the top of that stitch. Pull up a loop and we're going to complete a single crochet. Okay, then take your stitch marker out and take it and insert it into the top of that single crochet. And go ahead and clamp it shut. So the wrong side of our base is going to be staring at us for this row. So go with me on this and I know you can do this. Okay? So now we're going to chain 10. Just your regular chains. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Okay, we, we have our front of our chain, and we have the humps on the back. Now to give it more of a chain look, I'm going to use the humps. To me, it makes it look nicer by having the chain look for the finished part. 
So we're going to skip that first one. And in the and in the second one, we're going to pull up that hump. Okay. Let's see. Always on camera. <laughs> let's see here. There we go. Oops. Well, we're going to do a slip stitch in that first hump. Come on. There we go. So, to do a slip stitch, just yarn over. You went through the loop. And then we're just going to go through the loop on the hook. This will give it a nice, a little uh, tighter finish on the end. Okay. So, into the next four chains we're going to place increases so single crochet increases here's one into the second chain here's two into the third Here's three, and it should start to curl on you already. You see that? And on the next one, here's fourth. So the next chain gets a half double crochet increase. So place your finger on your loop, yarn over, and then go into the hump on that chain, pull up a loop, you'll have three loops. What this does is make it just a little bit taller than the single crochet, yarn over, aim your hook down, pull it through all those loops, there's one, let's do it one more time finger on that loop, yarn over, go through the loop in your work. So we have our loop right here. We have three on our hook. Yarn over and pull through all three of them. You have three chains left on your foot. This time we're going to do a double crochet. <coughs> Excuse me. So yarn over, <coughs> excuse me, insert, just like we're going to do a half double crochet, but we're going to do something a little bit different. So pull up that loop. Now we're actually going to be doing like two single crochets on top of each other. So yarn over and pull through the first two loops. Okay, it looks like our single crochet, doesn't it? We're going to do that one more time. So yarn over and through the second set of double loops on our hook. That completes one double crochet. So yarn over. Pick up on the, the hump on the back. Yarn over through two loops. And yarn over through two loops. Let's do it one more time. Alrighty, so now you're asking, where do I go? Where do I go? Well, if you turned your work like I did, bring the wrong side, which will have your little tail here, and we're going to find our single crochet. We're going to skip this stitch right here, so that means into the next stitch, we want to place a single crochet, I mean a slip stitch, so Put our yarn through the top of that stitch, I mean our, ugh, our hook through the top of our stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, but continue that loop through the loop on our hook. Okay, so we have one foot here. That's going to give us our, our curl. 
So we'll move on to the second foot. And remember how I showed you after you complete your slip stitch because you skipped one stitch on the body. I guess I should put down here body, make it easier. Okay, so we did the skip the stitch on the body, slip stitch onto the body. Now we're going to come right back up here to single crochet and we're going to repeat all of this seven more times for a total of eight arms or octo legs, whatever you want to call them. Okay, so let me show you how to move on to the next one and then I'll put that picture back up so you can see it. So we slip stitched here, so right into the next one, single crochet, and then chain 10. Okay? If you need the video assistance, I suggest you go back to where we started right here on the video, and it'll show you how to do it again. But for right now, I'm going to leave this right here. Please pause your video, and when you get to the end of the row, I'll show you what we're going to do next. But just remember that the wrong side needs to be facing you, so where your tail is needs to be facing you this whole time that we go around, okay? Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But I haven't finished this. Okay, we should have the one we skip and the last one for the slip stitch. If you have more stitches here, I hate to say this because I did it when I did my demo um, to make sure I had it right. I didn't skip stitches here. So you need to make sure that you skip that stitch because it is important. Each one of these legs covers three stitches. The single crochet is one, the skip stitch is two, and the slip stitch is the third one. And then when you start the single crochet again, that is the first one. <clears throat> so I finished the eighth leg I got my slip, uh, skipped stitch, and I'm going to slip stitch into the next one here. Yeah, because it's the back stitch here. Hang on. Okay, slip here. Okay. All right. So that completes the leg row. All right, now we're going to turn our work again. And this row is going to be a challenge row. We need 24 single crochets around and we're going to start with this first one right here. Oh, wait a second, let's go back. Okay, where we just completed the slip stitch, we're gonna place a single crochet. So enlarge that loop just a little bit and go in and complete a single crochet and then take the stitch marker out and mark that first single crochet. After this, everything will be normal crochet after this row. Let me put it that way. Okay, so we got single crochet into the slip stitch. Now pull the leg forward and we're going to single crochet in that skip stitch. Now to pick up the same row that the skip stitches are on, we're basically going to be sticking two single crochets in some of these stitches. So here's our 
single crochet where we started the chain 10. We're going to go in that same stitch that the single crochet was on and make a single crochet. Okay, now the next stitch right here is the sing is the slip stitch. <laughs> a lot of words that begin with S's, right? So this slip stitch, what we're going to do is bring your hook in between the middle and you're going to find where it goes into that stitch on that row below and you're going to create a single crochet. It all works. Okay? So here's our single crochet, here's our slip stitch. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop my camera and I'm gonna bring it up even closer so that you can see what you're doing. But what we started here, can you see the little ridge that's going up? This is what's gonna create the body of the, the kitty cat head. So hang on just a second. All right, so I'm hoping that with this up closer, you can see it even better. Okay, so we did the single crochet in the skipped stitch. Now this next one here is the single crochet. Now this is looking at it backwards, but we want it to go into that lower row. So right here on the side, just like so, drop a loop and complete that single crochet. So basically this single crochet is off to the side. We just took one single crochet and went into the same one. Not part of the leg, but part of the, the body of the row that we put the legs on. Okay, so now we're gonna take our hook <clears throat> and then take the leg and bring it back this way. And here's the the slip stitch. So we're going to go into and drop a loop and complete a single crochet. Okay, and then bring that leg forward and here's our skipped stitch. Okay, can you see the, the little ridge that it's creating. Okay, let's do this again. Here's a single crochet, so we're going to go right into that next stitch and create a single crochet. Our next stitch is the slip stitch, so bring your work forward, find the bottom of that stitch, which is right here. single crochet. Now bring the foot towards you. Here's the skipped stitch. Okay, so it's slip stitch, skipped stitch, and single crochet stitch. Those are the three for each one of these feet. So slip stitch, skipped stitch, single crochet, once you've done all of those, you can start that again in your mind. Pull the leg forward. Let's see, we just did this one, so we want to do the slip stitch. Pull the leg towards you. The skipped stitch. And the single crochet. All right, call me crazy, but it does work. <laughs> for a no so octo kitty continue around I know you can do this so pause your video you can cuss at me as you want but once you get to the end you're gonna say ah oh, that was easy <laughs> at the end of the row you will have a little gap so don't be alarmed if you do but I need for you once you get to the end, count around and make sure that you have 24 single crochets. You see the little ridge? 
the rise up here and what this is going to do is we're going to be stitching so all of the right side stitching as if we were doing it all along without ever twisting and turning it shows okay so that way also we have the right side of our leg showing and pretty soon we'll have the right side of our stitch showing as we create the kitty head so count for 24 stitches and then I promise you the rest of this will just be normal crochet so moving on to our next row we're going to do a single crochet in every stitch so we're going to have a total of 24 remember our little gap which is okay let's take out our stitch marker mark that stitch with your fingernails in case you don't want to lose it and let's go ahead and insert our hook so we continue the spiral that amigurumi is known for so here's one replace our stitch marker here's one so we're going to move over here to the second one and the third one okay continue around until you have a total of 24 you got a nice little ridge going on here we're working our way up our next row will be a repeat row where we will do three single crochets and then an increase so here's one two three and an increase into the same stitch one two three increase we're going to continue this repeat around till we get to our stitch marker again one two three increase remember two single crochets in one stitch And I'll meet you there. Our next row will be four single crochets and an increase. So here's one, two, three, four, and then the increase. Continue this around and I'll meet you there. Please pause your video. All right, mine is starting to show signs of opening up more. You should have 36 stitches on this row. For the next three rows, 36 stitches in each row. Please pause your video and I'll meet you there. All right, so you should have a nice little height here. Looks like a cup with legs on it. <laughs> All righty, I've already added my first single crochet. So we're going to be adding the bobble noses and we're also going to be decreasing this row. So we're going to do four single crochets. So here's one, two, three, and four. We're going to do an invisible decrease. To do that, we want to take our hook and go through the first part of the loop. You'll notice that at the top there's two of the, it looks like a chain. So pull up the first loop and into the second one because what we're going to do is we're going to join these two stitches together. It may seem a little tight, but you can go ahead and get it in there with no problem. So yarn over and pull through those two loops there. 
Now you have two loops on the hook. Let's complete our single crochet. And that's our first decrease. Single crochet in the next stitch. Are you ready to learn how to do a bobble stitch? Hang on. I wanted to pull it up close so that way you could see it better. In this next stitch only, we're going to be placing four stitches. They're all going to be part of the double crochet, but follow me and we'll get it done. So, finger on the loop on the hook, yarn over, we're going to drop a loop, yarn over through the first two loops on your hook. This is like half of a double crochet. And we're going to do that again. We're going to leave these two alone. So yarn over and into that same stitch right here. Pull up a loop. Yarn over and through the next two loops on the hook. Okay, so it looks like we have two half done double crochets. We're going to do this two more times. Yarn over. It's going to seem like it's going to get tight, but it'll be okay through the first two loops and then one more time. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five loops on our hook. <clears throat> now, in order to go through all these five loops with no problem, yarn over, aim the hook this way. If you have it up this way, it'll catch on those other stitches. So yarn over, aim it down, pull up on those stitches, and bring the hook through, and it'll come through with no problem. Okay? Now to make it look like it has a bubble, we're going to go into the next stitch. So find where all those are, and then find your next stitch, which will be really close to the edge right here. And we're going to do a single crochet. Okay, and then we're going to take that cluster from the back and push it forward. All right, so here we have one, two, three, four of the half double crochets, and that's a four double crochet cluster. In other words, known as the bobble stitch. We have the single crochet in between. Now, in the next stitch, we're going to do the same thing. The four double crochet cluster. So yarn over, drop a loop, yarn over through two. Okay, remember we want to do this a total of four times. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four. So yarn over, aim your hook down, push up at the same time, and pull it through. Make sure I... Okay, and then into the next stitch. You're going to hate me, but we got to do it. We need to do a decrease. So with this, the next two stitches, we're going to pull up the front loop. and then yarn over through both loops. And then you can push those stitches forward. So you have like two little bumps there. Okay, and then we're gonna continue on with four single crochets and a decrease. So since we did our decrease, one, two, three, four, and decrease. Repeat the four 
single crochets and decrease till we get to the stitch marker. Please pause your video. For our next row, we will have a total of 30 stitches. We're going to single crochet around. Let me show you what we're going to do when we get to where the nose is at. So here I have one. Whoops, dropped it. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Okay, so our next stitch, you'll see a long one, a short one, and a long one. Those are what we want to get into. We want to take up the long one. Because that's the top half of the bobble. The short one is a single crochet in the middle. And then the long one. And then we'll continue on. Make sure you have 30 single crochets at the end of this row. And then we will continue on. And we are more than halfway done. We have one, two, three, four, about six more rows to go. Continuing on, this row is going to have three single crochet and one decrease as our repeat. So here's one, two, three, and let's, over the next two stitches, do our invisible decrease. And this is our repeat for this row. One, two, three single crochets, one decrease. Continue around. I'll meet you at the end of the row. Our little body's moving up. Our next row, we will do 24 single crochets. So one single crochet all the way around. And I'll meet you at the end of the row. Please pause your video. All right, I thought I had enough rows, according to my notes, to add the eyes, and we don't. We need one more row of 24 single crochets around. So not only did we do the one row, we're just going to add one more row. So please do that and pause your video. So now that we have the additional row that was needed, that I forgot to put in my notes. <laughs> We're going to add our safety eyes. So we want to count down one, two, three rows. And then it, the eye placement is wherever you want it to be. It can be over here, it can be over here, it can be over here, wherever you want to put it. But I'm going to put it close to my nose. Let's see, one, two, three, and I'm going to go over two stitches. And I have my little eyes kind of aiming up. These are kawaii eyes. I think they look so cute. A lot of them call them cartoon eyes. Whatever they are. I like them. I think they're cute. Remember we have our backing. Now, whenever you have safety eyes, you always need a safety eye jig. Reason being, let's pull the eye out. You see the little... Um, hump, stump, whatever on the back. You want that stump to go through the backing. If you had it on a flat surface, it won't go through. So, this particular model of a safety back has like a little hump. Can you see that? Little ridge. So we want to make it so that that ridge fits in one of these holes. This one is made by Snowy Aspen Shelby. She's out of Colorado. I really like her jig because it's 
big, it's sturdy, and it has plenty of holes to choose from to do the eyes that I choose to use. So what you'll do is this will end up going into whatever, it won't fit in this one, so it'll go into this one. And when we push it through, you want to hear it click. Okay, so let's go ahead and put our, I already got one eye. Well, let's put this one in so we don't lose where it's supposed to go. Okay. Now remember, these are going to help pull the yarn in just a little too. So however you put them in, you need to make sure for these backings, they will not turn and rotate too well afterwards because it's going to be tight. These are really good for small children, but believe it or not, they kids somehow find a way to take them off. So if you have children that will chew on things, I don't recommend this kind of thing for those kind of children. Um, if they don't and they can appreciate it, um, these eyes are really good. The best, to be honest with you. Okay, so we're going to, we have the yarn. We went th all the way through. We're going to place our backing on. Okay, I had hand and shoulder surgery, so I can't, I don't think I can. Let me see if I can. Yeah, I did the first, I guess I'm getting my strength back. <laughs> so here's one click, but we need one more click. Let me put this other one on. And you want to do it while you still have, oh, okay, I got it. You want to do it while you still have a big enough opening, but not no stuffing in there. Now, I'm going to have to stand up to put my body weight on this. And so I'm going to take this and place it into this hole right here. Okay, and then take most of my weights on my left hand because my right hand had surgery. So let's, do you hear it click? You see how it popped through another level? Okay, so let's do this one. You see how it's at now? We're going to make it pop through. All right. There we go. So you see how it popped through a little more? And you also see how it kind of cupped the eyes. The safety jigs are really helpful. So shout out to Snowy Aspen. This is Shelby. Um, her website is on um, TikTok and Instagram for her jig and it's made out of wood it's really nice okay so back to this we got our eyes in now we want to stuff it or we can wait and put the two more rows of 24 on and then stuff it in fact I think I'm going to wait so I'm not going to stuff mine until I put the extra two rows on and then I'm going to stuff it. So two rows of 24 and I will meet you there with stuffing. So here's what our little guy looks like so far. So the next thing to do is to stuff him. Now, I don't do anything special in my stuffing. I just stick it in there. Be careful of the backings of the eyes because you can scratch yourself. And then, after I get my stuffing in there, I know everybody has their own way of sticking stuffing in. Um, I don't pull it apart and whatever else others do so push it in there and you and because this one is going to have kitty cat ears we're going to leave like the top two rows 
unstuffed. Okay, so once you put it in there, stuff it around the bottom to your liking. Okay, and let's make sure our guy can stand sit up. Yeah, just fine. Now you notice this one's a little plumper. This one's thinner. I can add more stuffing to stretch the stitches a little bit. But as you do that, you want to make sure that you don't see the stuffing come in between. Okay, so add it, the stuffing to your liking, and then I'll show you what to do to finish this edging off. So I was able to stuff more, like right here in front, under the, the bobble stitches, and more here on the sides. So I think I got the same fullness as my original kitty here. So let's remove our stitch marker we're going to crochet two single crochets. And then take the work and fold it in half like this. We're going to be slip stitching through the front stitches and the back stitches. So let's start with the next two and come back here. We're going to skip this one here on the end, the one that we just finished. We're going to skip that one and we're going to go through the next set. So basically you're going to be going through one, two, three, four loops on your hook, which is actually two stitches. So bring the yarn through, let's snug up those stitches there to make sure they stay tight, and then through the last loop on that hook. And that's our slip stitch. Now we're just going to go ahead and pick up the next two stitches, front and back, all the way across. Okay, so you don't have to sit here and watch me. Continue till you get to the end. Do not cut your yarn, and I'll meet you there. Please pause your video. So we've made it all the way across. Now I'd like for you to pull about 18 to 20 inches of yarn and go ahead and cut it. And let's pull that through our last loop on our hook. Okay, so here's the back side, and here's the front side. Now, in order to get the kitty cat ear look, this is where our doll making needle comes in handy. This is approximately five to six inches long, which is a good height for our ear making. Now, we're going to be doing some self sculpturing basically. So take your needle, fold it in half. I mean, fold the yarn in half over your needle. And then slowly work those fibers through the eye by pushing up on it and then pulling it through. Okay. Leave a little tail on the end. So now come through here to find your center. Which is about here. So it would be about right here. And pull your yarn through. Now mine has a point on it, so I gotta be careful because this thing has poked me who knows how many times, and believe me, it hurts. Now there's going to be stuffing that will come out because this is blanket yarn. So just go with us on this. 
Okay, so we want to come down. Well, here's one, two, into our third row and go straight across to the front of our kitty. You can go like in between the eyes. Let's see, but we want to go down three rows. One, two, three. Okay. Pull it through. And like I said, your stuffing's going to follow. Just pull the excess little bits out. Okay, now go over the top. Now this time when you go into the same hole in the back, you want to come all the way down to the bottom into the center. Okay, so we're coming out here. And then pull your yarn all the way through. Now to go back, we're going to go over a couple of stitches, like so. And then we're going to come up in the front where we went down at. Okay, let's poke around. Make sure you don't poke your thumb because trust me, it hurts. So this is the same area that we went down at. Okay, so let's pull it through. If I could find blunt doll needles, I'd buy them, trust me. <laughs> okay, so now what we want to do is press it down just a little bit and tighten that yarn up. Not to where it breaks, but just enough to snug it up. You see how it's starting to take shape already? Okay. Now we want to go down. This will all be straightened out, so don't worry about the little buckle here. We want to go down and into the same area. All right, we're going to pull it. We want to do this two times. So this is our second time. Alright, so let's get out of the self sculpturing needle, the doll needle, and let's pick up our tapestry needle. Okay, and with our tapestry needle, we pulled up in the front, so we're going to go to the back. And we're going to tie this off. All right. Now, what I like to do to hide my yarns is I'm going to come down and I'm going to come into a row and I'm going to bury the tail into the center of these stitches so I'm going to go through and then pull and this will help so that in case this ever came out, nobody would be pulling on it. It's actually coming through the back of these stitches. Then you can go down. Just a little added security. Okay, and then we just want to play with it a little bit so that we can get the shape, the final shape that we're looking for. Let's place about 10 inches of black yarn on our needle and we'll start to do the sculpturing of the nose and mouth. So to start any yarn that we want to bury it in the long run 
we want to come down a little bit from where our work is going to be. And then I'm going to come up to the center or the top of that single crochet between the two bobble stitches. When we pull this through, we want to have a little tail, maybe about two inches left behind. Of course, we're going to be pulling some more uh, stuffing out of the way. And then here, we're going to go over this two times. So here's one, and then two. So we went down, we got our first one, so we're going to go down into that same hole. We're going to come over one stitch. And this is where you're actually creating a personality for our little kitty cat face. And I'm going to go through the two black. See, I went under both of those. Mm, loosened up just a little. And come over one stitch. Oops. And then have the needle go back out the same hole it came in. Alright, we're going to cut this down to about two inches and place a square knot. Oh, in case any of you have been asking how come I have not been placing music in my videos lately, every time I find a copyright free music, YouTube's been saying that I had a music infringement, so I just decided to stop putting music in it. Okay, so I'm going to insert my hook, come out the same hole as the rest of the yarn, and pull that in and bury that. Work the yarn off of the hook, and so here is the front of our face. Let's add some yarn to the center top to kind of fill it in. Or you can create a little um, crocheted bow, but I'm going to tie a bow. This kitty has yellow, so I'm going to find a different color for this particular kitty. I found some glitter yarn, so I'm going to pull some out about 16 inches long. I like adding the little touches of the bow. To me, it's super cute. So I'm going to go underneath those two lines that I used to help sew um, the shape of the ears. And I'm just going to place, I folded the yarn in half, so I'm going to place the folded end on my hook and then pull it through. Making sure that this is doubled properly. Find half again. There we go. Let's place an overhand knot and then two loops and create a bow. Oops, I dropped it somehow. I believe that out of all these potato monsters that I've been creating, this one is probably my favorite besides the original one. I really enjoyed making these little guys because they, they're so simple and they're quick. Videos always make it look like it takes forever, but it, it really doesn't. It's just the process of showing how it's done and getting it done. Okay, leave a short little tails on the end there. So
spread the double bow out a little bit. What do you think? You like that? I think it's cute. So, here's, here's my little Octo Kitty potato monster. Here's my original potato monster. I hope you're enjoying making these little monsters with me. I know kids love this stuff. They have so much fun playing with them. And even though they're called monsters, they're really not that scary. <laughs> so, next time we'll have another crochet tutorial. I hope you come and join me then. So, till next time, bye-bye.